You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show where we talk about nuance, developing a clinical research search tool with Azure Cognitive Search. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show. We're talking about nuance, developing a clinical research research tool with Azure Cognitive Search. I've got some guests. Why don't you introduce yourself? We'll start with you, Jamin. Did I say it right? You did, and All that's right. a 50-50 shot, so you did pretty good. Uh, my name is Jamin, and I am a product manager at Nuance that oversees a clinical analytics tool that we'll be talking about today. I love it. Derek, you're up. Hi there. My name is Derek Legenshoff. I'm one of the program managers at Azure Cognitive Search here at Microsoft. Awesome. So for those that don't know what Nuance is, can you give us maybe a little rundown? We'll go to you, Jamin. Sure. So Nuance is a... Um, uh, speech recognition a software company, and it, now we specialize a lot in AI tools and have gone into two main verticals, healthcare, and then ultimately enterprise. Fantastic. And what is it that they build? A whole lot of stuff. Oh, I love it. But that. I personally work with um, a clinical analytics solution in the diagnostic side of healthcare. So diagnostics is radiology, x-rays, MRIs, pathology, specimens, tissue samples, things like that. So in diagnostics, we have um, a lot of, 80% of every patient's medical journey usually begins with imaging. So that's either x-rays if you broke an arm, it could be CT scans if you're getting ready for surgery, whatever it might be. And I work primarily in that part of diagnostics healthcare. That's amazing. And so obviously this is the AI show. What does AI have to do with all of this? Yeah, we, um, we realized that about 97% of um, imaging data is, uh, goes unanalyzed, meaning yeah. that it's either unstructured or it's not something that's consumable in any type of reporting analytics tool. So there's a huge need to be able to pull out key findings from the unstructured data or the uh, unreviewed data within imaging. So it could be the images, it could be the report narrative from the radiologist or the pathologist. And so we use AI tools to identify key findings and extract those so that they're usable and consumable for healthcare. So when you say usable and consumable, is it like there's a ton of images and I want to be able to figure out which images are important to diagnose a patient or is it for something else? Yeah, all the above. So it's absolutely that. Um, but then it's also to how do you take the key report data from a radiologist? Because a radiologist will just dictate what they see in that in those images um, and then that's just a report and you can give that report to the ordering provider or you can give it to the patient but it's not really structured in any way that is a lot allows you to do any type of analytics off from it um, and so there's a lot of opportunity in this kind of green space of healthcare so it feels like there's you're, you're saying there's a lot of data it's really unstructured and we're trying to make sense out of it how, how do you do this yeah so if you look at a radiology report um, and we wanna be able to find out a key clinical question. So let's just say, let's say, let's find all the patients that we've had in the past or current that have pneumonia. Um, that sounds like an easy clinical question to answer, but it's extremely difficult to actually get the answers for that because the data that you're looking at, like we mentioned is um, unstructured. There's no key way for me to say, give me all of the pneumonia that, that you know every patient potentially has. So I oversee a product that allows you to be able to pull out um, some of those key clinical questions. Um, and I'd be happy to show you a demo if you're open to it. Yeah, I'd love it. So so just because I want to back up, it, what's the name of the product? And what is it like if you had like an elevator pitch, what, what would it be? So the name of the product is Empower Clinical Analytics. And the really the kind of the, the elevator pitch is getting key data out of unstructured data. So how do you answer clinical questions that allow you to be able to drive good patient outcomes and key insights at your institution? I love it. All right, well, why don't you show us how it works? Absolutely. I'm gonna share my screen here a second. So what you're looking at right now is uh, the Empower Clinical Analytics kind of homepage. So when you log in, you'll be able to see um, you know, that you're able to search by a particular keyword. We have radiology domain, pathology, clinical notes. We can put a lot of different data into the actual application. And then I can search by a particular keyword. So I mentioned pneumonia. So let's go ahead and just bring up pneumonia. 
So I'm going to look for any report within the database that has the word pneumonia in it. I go ahead and I click search and I'm able to then get 1,222 reports in this demo set that have the keyword pneumonia in there. And that's interesting, but it's not super relevant yet because it just gives you all the reports that have the word pneumonia in there. So I, I want to actually drill down and I'm gonna look at just the impression section. So in a radiologist report, the most important section of the report is impression. So we parse out each section of the report and I wanna look for in the, in the impression section, any of the uh, any of the reports that have a keyword pneumonia in there. And so I click on that and I can look at the radiologist report right over here. But if you'd see, it says no pneumonia right there. Also, so I went from 1,222 reports now down to 473 reports by just looking at the ones with the impression section. But then it also has a lot of negative findings, meaning that there's no evidence of pneumonia or no pneumonia found. And so if I want to answer the clinical question of give me all the patients with pneumonia, then I need to be able to do some additional analysis on that. Right. So what I can go over here and click on actions and optimize, I can then maximize my positive findings. So if I maximize my positive findings, it removes any negation terms that are in proximity to the word pneumonia. So then I go down to 308 reports that have a positive finding of pneumonia that's in there. And so now I can answer that clinical question of give me all the patients that have a positive finding for pneumonia within whatever date range you want to be able to pull it. And now that I've created that cohort of data, I can do a lot of fun stuff with it. So my 308 reports with a positive finding of pneumonia, I can analyze that, click on it and say, all right, what are some key uh, variables um, within the, the reports, their patient age, their status in patient outpatient and emergency, um, I'm able to look at what organization it came from and when they were completed. So a lot of these key variables that are um, good for us to be able to do some analysis are there. And I can also then export that data. I can save that search. I can create a data set if I want to be able to carve that out and compare it with other data sets. I can do something called a sequential search. Sequential searches, if I have two different searches, I can compare them side by side and find patients that satisfy both. So this is really great for cause and effect. So if I want to say, hey, how many of my patients had a lung biopsy and then within seven days had pneumonia? I'd be able to do a, a lung biopsy search and then I'd be able to do a pneumonia positive finding search and find those patients that had both were in both search results um, for some cause and effect. I can also create a signal where I am able to uh, generate an alert every time the, uh, a new patient or a new study comes in that satisfies that criteria. So the real power with Empower is that I'm able to build and answer and drill down to answer a clinical question. And then we add a lot of intelligence and intuitive features to it that we can wrap around. So healthcare is a huge proponent of technology, but they oftentimes don't like building technology. Right. And they want to be able to consume it. And so for us to be able to add a lot of buttons that do you know, maximize positive findings, which are proximity searches, doing sequential searches, comparing two searches side by side, creating alerts whenever a new patient comes in, it has been very successful. And we went from being a uh, kind of a smaller on-prem solution to now we've moved to a hosted infrastructure. Where we've had a scale. We've had over 200 research articles cite um, the Empower uh, wow. tool for the research. And we have probably about 1.2 billion reports that we're indexing um, right now within the application. So we've we've scaled a lot and we've grown a lot, um, and uh, we've been able to to find a really interesting niche in the in the market. So it feels like writing something like this from scratch would would take a long time. I mean, how long did it take to make something like this? So we've been um, Empower's been around for about 10 years, um, and really the last four years is when we've been scaling um, a lot. And we actually ran into um, some some uh, problems with it when it came to scale because we were just moving so so quickly. And we had a, an, our old uh, index solution um, that we had wasn't able to actually host uh, be a hosted product very well. It really had a lot of complications when it came to the size of the data sets that we were indexing. So we were looking for a, a solution and cognitive search um, was where we landed and it's been uh, the best decision for us for sure. We have saw huge increases in uh, performance and accuracy with how they stem and how they pull out um, a lot of stuff within the analyzer. Um, and so 
I know Derek is uh, um, on the cognitive search side, and I uh, I thank him almost weekly for building this solution that we're able to consume. So it's it's basically built on top of the indexing that Azure Cognitive Search does, plus the the stuff that practitioners would need in this case, like dashboards, etc. Yep. So we've the, highly the, customized a lot off from Cognitive Search. Awesome. Well, I know I know Derek, you've kind of just been watching how. If people are interested in doing this kind of software, can you tell us a little bit about Azure Cognitive Search and maybe tell us how Empower used it to empower clinicians? Sure, yeah, I'd love to. And you know, at a high level, Azure Cognitive Search is a platform as, as a service. And essentially, our goal is just to make it really easy for you to be able to build out a rich search experience. So what I wanted to show you today was a little bit of like you know, what these queries that Jamin is, is sending through the Nuance Empower app actually looks like. The thing I'm most impressed with, with what Jamin and the team built, you know, is that um, they're still leveraging our, our search syntax to be able to help users find that, that information they need. And at the end of the day, that's what search is all about, like helping that person find the right information at, at the right time. Um, so in, in VS Code here, I'm, uh, I've got some, some uh, you know, queries queued up. As you can see, I'm just issuing some, some search queries to, um, to a search service. And I have like a, just a subset of, of Jamin's uh, search index here. And so what I want to do is just start with that basic keyword search that the Jamin showed us where I'm going to search pneumonia. I'm also going to set count equals true just so I get the number of, of search results back. And then I'm just going to select uh, a couple of these fields uh, so that I don't have to pull back all the data. It'll make the, the query a bit quicker as well. So we do that. And you can see we get, get 10 search results. You can see you know, in this, this first search result, uh, it's talking about viral pneumonia. We actually have a few where the impression field is null. So we must have gotten a match in, in a different field. And the rest of them, you know, the, the impression field also talks about, about pneumonia. So now to kind of drill down like, like Jamin did in, uh, when you've shown us the Empower app, what we can do is I could, I'm actually going to switch the query type to be query type equals full just so we get access to a few extra bells and whistles. And then I'm going to, to do that same fielded search that, that Jamin showed us. So um, we say you know, impression, colon, pneumonia, what that says is we're, we're just going to scope down uh, this query to uh, this this uh, this query term to that particular field, uh, so we can when we run this, we see you know, we've we've gotten rid of those, those null values now, and so we were down to the seven results. And one of the really powerful things about uh, fielded search is you know, it doesn't need to apply to the whole query. You could say you know, part of the query I want to search in the impression field, part of it I want to search in in all fields or something like that. Um, but let's go let's go one step further and, and show the. Um, you know, show the uh, like the the search where we maximize those those positive findings. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just paste in some some text here. It's always hard to, to type with an audience. Um, and what I can do is I'm also going to also use this this search field parameter now. So similar to what we were doing with um, that fielded search, uh, search field is also going to scope our, our query to that particular field. And since now we have multiple clauses, it, it makes more sense to move that to the search fields parameter. But we have, we're doing a few extra things in this, and we're, and we're using something called proximity search that the Jamin mentioned. Um, and proximity search is essentially one step above phrase search. And to give you an example, let's say you're you're, you're searching for for George Washington in a collection of documents, and you know you, what might happen is you might find uh, you know a document someone whose first name is George with a different last name, and someone whose first, whose last name is Washington with a different first name, and that's going to be a good result because we're searching for those er, those terms independently. But we can use phrase search to make sure, like, hey, we want George and Washington to be together. But for for Nuance's use case, phrase search would be a little bit too restrictive because um, it might, like, the document might just might not say like no pneumonia. It says there are no signs of pneumonia, and we still want to be able to catch that as well. So that's where the proximity search comes in, where it's almost like a I guess a fuzzy version of phrase search, where we're saying, hey, check if these two terms you know, occur within X characters characters of each other. So in this case, I'm saying. You know, I, I want to see if if no and pneumonia occur within ten characters of each other, and and specifically, I, I want to make sure that that's not the that you know, that doesn't happen. I want to filter those out as a result. So I'm going to find you know, show me everything that says pneumonia, but doesn't have any of these terms within ten characters of of pneumonia. So we'll go ahead and, and send that request, and now you can see we've been able to scope down the the queries, uh, sorry, the the results from from ten results to five to really help that person drill down to the, the actual information they. They needed and the last thing i wanted to show you is, is how nuance is able to actually build those graphs and allow you to kind of see 
you know, what, what, what were the age groups or demographics of the people who, uh, who fit in this, this cohort. And what we can do is we can use our facets for that. Um, and so what we'll do, I'm just going to paste this in. We're going to do two separate facets. One, we're going to use a, fac a facet for uh, uh, patient sex and then also for patient age. And age is a numerical field. So we also need to kind of say, what are the buckets? So I'm just going to split this into age buckets, like people less than 20, people between 20 and 40 and, and so on. So when I run this query, you, you, you can see there's some extra data being returned. Um, and so now we see you know, of these five search results, you know, three of the people were, were male, two of them were female. If we look at the age, it looks like you know, three of the, the people were between 40 and 60, two of them were over 60. So now we get all these insights that um, you know, Jamie is able to render on screen in that application. And then users can go and even add this to filter. So maybe you want to filter down to only see people where um, their age is between 40 and 60, because maybe you're, the patient you're working with you know, fits that, that criteria. Um, and this, this is kind of like the tip of the iceberg. I think there's, there's so much you can do with the, with the search syntax. And I think Jamie and the team are doing a great job of that. So if I'm understanding this correctly, Empower is putting these documents into Azure Cognitive Search. It's getting indexed. And then these queries, you can run and pull anything you want out of that index. Well, anything that it's indexing on. Am I, am I getting this right? Exactly. So once you get the data into the search index, kind of like uh, there's, there's all these different unique ways you can query that data to find exactly what you're looking for. Well, this is amazing. Where can people go to find out more about Azure Cognitive Search? We'll go to you, Derek. Sure. So one great starting point is aka.ms slash KM solutions. And that's our knowledge mining solution accelerator. Essentially, it's a, a GitHub repo that just makes it super easy to get up and running with Azure Cognitive Search. You can throw a few documents in, in blob stores and maybe within about an hour, have like a full solution with a web UI it's where you true. can search over your documents and you know, try out some of this, this query syntax as well. Amazing. And then, oh, go ahead. No, keep going. I, th there's probably more places to go. Yeah, I'll say another good link, and we didn't talk about this too much in, in this, this, this session today, but if you go to aka.ms slash AZS Semantic, you can learn about Semantic Search, which is an exciting new uh, area of the product we've been working on where we're collaborating with Bing to pull out all of their kind of state-of-the-art models to really help improve search relevance. So it's another way you can kind of really get great search results out of Azure Cognitive Search. Amazing. Jamin, where can folks go to find out more about Empower? Absolutely. So the same AK a.ms slash uh, nuance and power is a place where you can go to learn more about the application and some of the use cases as well. Awesome. Well, this has been super amazing. Thank you so much for being with us, my friends. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Also, thank you so much for watching. We've been learning all about nuance, developing a clinical research, research search tool with Azure Cognitive Search. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care, my friends.